What's up, guys? Welcome back to the SLI Invitational. We have the lower bracket game now. CDC going up against Ehome Keen. CDC fresh off of a loss up against uh, IG Vitality. It was, though, uh, a rather tilting loss. Like, they were very far ahead and then they kind of threw it away, which is the worst kind of loss. But uh, they had a quite a long break, so... We're hopefully fresh and clean for another best of three. I'm Mike Loris, going to be your caster for this one and the next ourselves. An interesting start, to say the least. The bands are looking almost as normal as can be. Uh, Alchemist instead of Monkey King is going to get that one for the Monkey Kings, uh, for the C deck squad, so they should be pretty happy with that. Going to go with all of the animals in the jungle. Monkey King now a bear picked up with Ursa. Ehome Keen getting a Crystal Maiden. In their first phase, perfectly reasonable. Legion Commander, definitely an interesting one. We've seen a couple of teams very highly prioritize the Legion, and some teams just ignore it completely. It does just kind of depend on your personal preference. Uh, XSS on IG comes to mind when you say Legion Commander, at least nowadays. And, you know, when you're talking specifically about the Chinese scene, it does seem like they like it a little bit more than others, but uh, Legion Commander is all well and good. The problem now is that you pick it up first phase and you're immediately up against an Ursa, who you're not gonna very easily win duels against unless you have a lot of help. You know, Alina is certainly a good place to start. Jesus, they're going really fast. Uh, but so yeah, the Ursa's gonna have a pretty good matchup, and that's pretty much the biggest reason why CDC grabbed that hero, just to make sure that they have a at least a soft counter to that Legion Commander, and now a little bit of a better one in the Abaddon. That second pick phase lasted for like 20 seconds. Ridiculous. Lena, Puck, Earth Spirit, Abaddon. So Ehome Keen have the, in the end, Crystal Maiden, Earth Spirit, Support Duo, which is one of the strongest ones I think you can actually pick up. Uh, you know, mix in a Monkey King with a Crystal Maiden or something like that, or Monkey King Warlock. Like, you're looking at a whole bunch of top-tier support heroes, and Ehome Keen's uh, entire crew is really mana-hungry. So the Crystal Maiden aura is going to do a hell of a lot of work for them. The only problem I see here with the Ehome Keen side is that CDC's uh, draft is very, very hard to kill. Monkey King's easy to kill if you can find him, and Ehome Keen have quite a few ways of doing that. Earth Spirit specifically, really good against uh, the Monkey King because it's so easy to clear the trees that he's standing on. But you do have to worry about Abaddon shielding, you have to worry about Puck, Elusivity, Ursa, of course has his ult as well. Ehome Kian have a lot of disables, but uh, actually cleanly getting off those kills is going to be very difficult. As CDC with the Abaddon offlane puck towards mid should be uh, just looking for a final support, and it's interesting to see the Shadow Shaman band out. We've seen a couple of teams experiment with uh, Shadow Shaman timing pushes. I think that's... Well, I mean, if you pick up a Shadow Shaman, you're always going to play that timing push game, so I'm not really sure if that's fair to say. But, uh... Yeah, when you pick up a Shadow Shaman, you get the Disables, but you also get that uh, that push power. CDC seriously lack that push power right now, and lacking a support role, a kind of babysitting support hero, I'm not really sure if they're going to be able to get it. Uh, they could just grab, like, a Warlock and just, you know, kind of batten down the hatches and kind of play this uh, mid-game countering, counter team fight type of game, but the... CDEC squad, though elusive and hard to kill as they may be, definitely lack objective taking power. Now, they're going to be able to kill off Roche, that's easy, and Disruptor is not going to help them at all, by the way. Uh, they, they'll be able to take down Roche, but uh, as far as taking down objectives, really tough. And then Ehom Keen, going to slow things down, Resident Sleeper with the Naga Sirens. Good thing I have my coffee this time, guys, because I don't think. A uh, exhausted me can take a Naga Siren game. CDEC, like, they they can't really take objectives. They have to just win team fights overwhelmed up against a Naga Siren. I'm not sure if that's actually possible. Now, you know, CDEC do have a disruptor, so uh, dealing with the Naga Siren and a puck with the uh, silences as well is very, very possible. But Ehome Keen, they have the ability to snowball out of control and win very early. Or just get a little bit of a lead on the game and then hold that lead while the Naga Siren seals things up from there. So I really like where uh, Ehome Keen have landed on this draft. I feel like their supports just do a lot more than that of CDEC. I feel like their cores are uh, a lot better now that there's a Naga Siren in play, especially at taking objectives. And this Ursa is uh, yeah, going to be the only really scaling source of damage from the CDEC squad. 
Abaddon is kind of defensive, Puck as well. Puck as well, focused in uh, a little bit more of the kind of utility role. Is usually not going to be a huge damage dealer, unless you decide to go for Dagon, and even then, uh, I'm not really sure if that's going to be getting kills in some of these E-Home heroes. So E-Home Keen going to be loading out on the Radiant side. Uh, I really don't like E-Home Keen's team because they have a lot of players with names that I don't actually know, like Lena here. That I, I, It really gets to me. But we have a Lena in the game. We have an Earth Spirit as well. Bro, use these... Uh, Use Eng Englando characters, please. I am stupid American. Uh, Naga Siren, you can play by GGG. Over towards top, we got Dark on the Legion Commander, and uh, I think that is all of them. No, we got Wrong on the Crystal Maiden. On the other end, we got Sep on the Abaddon Shade, is going to be handling the Puck. Got Monkey King here as well. For some reason, it's still not tagged up properly. Just to make sure we don't have a stand in situation or anything like that yet. Yeah, just going to be June playing the Monkey King. Over on the Disruptor, it's Demons. I think he just got done clearing out some vision over in mid. And up towards top lane, we got Flyby on the Ursa. Now, if CDs EC play a incredibly aggressive, you know, run at you 24-7, just fight, fight, fight type of, uh, type of style, that'll be to their advantage. It is really what CDC do best with these heroes, like with an Ursa, with an Abaddon. As CDC, you don't want to be taking things late, period even discounting the fact that the enemy side has a Naga Siren, which is going to make going things, going late game, even worse for CDEC. They have to get into as many fights as possible. They have to just snowball out of control and keep everyone from E-Home down. Against Alina, Legion, Earth Spirit, that is incredibly difficult. So I'm not really sure if uh, they can pull that off, but it will come down to some of those early rotations and just lane mechanics. I feel like CDEC, they, they played really well up against IGV in the last series. And just off of that, I would say that, and from what I've seen of E-Home Keen, I would say that CDEC just uh, inherently with a slight lead if they're not tilted. We'll see if they can sustain that lead. We do have the Ganking Disruptor. Got him with the Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike actually does a lot of damage for a level 1 spell, but not really anything substantial there. They're going to leave the Ursa up towards top lane, going up against the Legion Commander. Is a, oh, June oh, rolled in on the bottom lane. He's going to get a little bit of help from the Aphotic Shield. Sep it's level 2 at this stage. No, actually, I thought he, I thought I saw Curse of Avernus on the Naga Siren. My bad. Still only level 1. It's only 1 minute in. 1 minute in. God, can I English or what? For right now, CM just be jungling. This Lina is having a pretty difficult time landing nukes on a puck. Very easily, uh... Dodgeable by the puck. His nukes are pretty clearly choreographed by her animations. Just gonna hang around this bottom lane. Applying pressure to the Naga Siren is is always gonna be nice as the roll goes wide. But uh, in this game for CDEC, I gotta say, like applying pressure to the Naga Siren is not actually as attractive as in some other games. And I say that because again, the game plan for CDEC should be just like all out aggression. Uh, usually, like Naga Siren kind of gets caught up in that. And Naga Siren, even with a bit of farm, can't stop that level of aggression. So, yeah, they will be pressuring the Naga because they can, but uh, going super out of their way, committing like a ton of heroes to constantly gank her, not really in their best interests. They should be just looking to gank anyone at all times. As long as they gank somebody, they should be pretty happy with any results that they get. This dual lane, working out pretty well so far for the Abad and Naga Siren. Having a tough time getting close. Just gotta worry about that curse. It uh, does add up damage really quickly. And Crystal Maiden. She should be yeah, level 2 at this stage. Set. Gonna take a little bit of damage here, but shield himself. June does not have the luxury of shielding himself. The slows are gonna stick on him. The net now applied, which GG picked up very early. But still June alive. He's gonna get the Frostbite buffed out by Set. Now just gonna go to town against the CM. One more smack of the sword will get the kill. Not really a cut as much as like a whack. This blade doesn't really cut like that. But either way, got you baited a little bit by the Monkey King. Promises of kills, but he opened up with a poor man shield magic stick. Making him probably the most durable he could possibly be with his uh, starting gold. Definitely close to it. 
And Abaddon getting off to a fast start means that he will be able to further lock down the lane. But more importantly, it means that he's going to be building into some threat. Getting uh, extra damage on the Abaddon, adding to the damage component of the Ursa. Really, really relevant when you're talking about pressuring E home quickly. So, Sep having a good time. Well, ha hell, everyone on the uh, dire side having a pretty good time. And it's only three minutes in, so net worth isn't really going to reflect that much, but got a whole bunch of red on the top. Let's fly by his lane versus the Legion Commander. You expect to be going pretty well until the Earth Spirit rolls in, but, uh, you know, the roll in has to actually hit. Overwhelming Odds level 2 is some serious business, though. Mana on the Legion Commander is really nice, actually. Uh, she's not exactly the brightest penny in the jar with her mana situation. So being able to drop that pretty regularly gives her a nuking advantage that Ursa really can't match. Unless he has a little bit of help. The roll in again. That's like 0 for 4 so far on the uh, on the Earth Spirit. Nice kick, though. Preventing the uh, field from going down. Keeping the Ursa in a cage with Legion. And... I can tell you one thing, guys. You do not want to be in a cage with a bear. I have not heard good stories about that. Usually it doesn't end well. Wrong is level 3 at this stage, but needs that level 4 to get that Nova. Level 3 is great for her allies, but for the CM herself, not that great. Flyby rolled in again. This time it lands. Field goes up. Demons. He's a couple more right clicks, one more, sneak it in, no heals from Dark, out of mana. Level 2 aura, not quite enough, and now the TP is coming back in, no, it's Monkey King cancelling it. Just gonna opt to farm this bottom lane instead. He's only level 3 Monkey King, Legion Commander, looks pretty soft, but if you try to mess with her, despite being at 1 -third HP, she can turn around and do a lot of damage. Still the CS is going... Pretty darn well for the dire side. Even that springboard to jump off of as far as pressuring the E home side. Lena, though, building in towards that level 6, has not had any help from the Earth Spirit just yet. If you do get the stun mixed in with the roll, killing off Shade, as long as those stuns land, definitely a possibility, even without Laguna Blade. They may or may not wait for that blade. I mean, Lena's not that far away from it. Up one more creep wave, there it is. And now Shade, he already used Phase Shift, and oh, they have a perfect rune. This is not spotted by the Dire either. No Observer coverage in the upper rune area. So I think that this Puck has a rock with his name on it. Unless he dodges randomly? No. The LSA is going to connect afterwards Laguna to the dome. And Monkey King's arrival, irrelevant in that situation. Puck, the victim of a balanced rune. They're going to run into wrong. Crystal Maiden going in pretty deep. Has a little bit of help right around the corner in the Earth Spirit. Can decide to roll in, but I'm not really sure if that's actually going to do anything. Kick onto two will stop them. But a glimpse and CM is not exactly a fast hero, especially with no boots. Is dead to the Disruptor. It's not a great trade for CDEC after all is said and done, but it's better than nothing, that's for sure. Getting the Disruptor and the Monkey King, a little bit of extra experience from that kill. Pretty big game. These level 6s on CDEC actually work really well together. If you are stuck in a Static Storm Plaza field, you're already pretty screwed. If you add a uh, command on top of that, you are going to die so quickly. It's actually insane. And a Puck. And a Puck is there too to throw in more AoE, as if that's even necessary. Silence on the roll in. Perfect play there from the Earth Spirit before the puck can even react. Another Laguna Blade, like clockwork, can be dropping on the puck. And Dark, they just want a glimpse there. It's level two. They get it. Into the field you go, Dark. He already healed himself. He's going to try to rush down June, but he's talking about racing with an Ursa. Again, not where you want to be in a cage with a bear. It will be a one for one trade. Again, not the best trade for CDEC. But definitely making the best out of a bad mid lane situation. Puck not really getting a lot of help. Really can't do all that much for Selena. If Puck tries to go for the Lena without proper backup, then you will just die as the Puck. Like, you need that orb as... You need 
the uh, kind of like how should I put this? You need to be elusive enough so that you still can dodge an LSA. Because if you get hit with the LSA, you're screwed. And if you go in, that means that you've pretty much committed all your mobility. And then LSA is that much easier to land. But look at this bottom lane situation. Sep is just bulldozing this lane. Two points in the sword. Maxed out shield, obviously. And he's going to be building up some early game. Oh, slims back into a cage. Run, Dark! Run in circles! Hope that it's going to be good enough, and it might actually be good enough, because the kick came through from the Earth Spirit. Great strike from the Monkey King, but a quick duel is going to get them some free duel damage. And now the Ursa, once again, looking for the, the Earth Spirit, but can't quite catch up. That running in circles, that stun combo of the Earth Spirit and the Crystal Maiden, just holding Flyby in place. Pretty well executed by Ehom Keen, and it's going to be uh, quite nice for the Legion Commander. Not exactly the best time in lane, but uh, with already one duel under her belt. Doing at this point, all things considered. Nowhere near as good as the Abaddon. But I'm not sure if it's possible to match what this Abaddon is getting. Middle tower is under attack. They do have level 4, almost level 5 on that Disruptor. Extra point and glimpse will go a long way getting those kills. Looks like they do have their eyes set on Lina. Again, you don't want to undercommit heroes when you're dealing with Lina. You need to go in with as many as you can. They're going to drop a field on her. Strike is there as well. LSA, it's castable, but it completely goes wide. They still don't do that much damage to her. June's going to eat a Laguna to the face as the Legion comes in looking for a duel. And it's going to be on the Disruptor. No, it's on the Puck. So that prevents the orb out, and Demon's also not looking too hot here. Field goes up and does catch the Earth Spirit, but there's another kick. He's going to try to suicide, and he will get it. But another dual win, and a 3-for-1 exchange. Uh, CM was picked off by the Abaddon, it looks like. The Ursa. No, the Ursa got a lot of gold from something. Not really sure how that went down, but still, it was a great fight for Ehome over in mid. CDEC commit with, again, a lot of utility-heavy heroes. Disruptor... Being there is nice if he has Static Storm, but obviously level 5 does not. Doesn't do a lot of damage. Monkey King can do a lot of damage, but needs time to build up those stacks. And Puck, of course, he's a decently high level. His damage is okay, but if you're talking about only a Puck killing off a Lina, then you run into that same exact situation where you kind of overcommit your mobility, and then you run out of options really quickly. CDEC are going to have to deal with a pretty stacked Lina moving forward. But, man, they have the most farm to Baden I've ever seen. More farm than his own Ursa on a safe lane. Naga Siren is also going to be feeling it. Not really having a super clean lane herself. It's going to straight Radiance Rush. And given how this is going for CDEC, which is not terrible, not great either, I don't see them being able to stop this Radiance from happening. Unless they get a lot of action with this Aegis coming up. There is a couple of Ehome in the area. Scan is off target. You'd think you'd be able to hear this, because it would be pretty loud, you would guess. And this Earth Spirit, he is going to be in the area, but not in time. Now is caught in some static. And now he's going to get beaten down by the Monkey King. Bam goes the stick. Aegis on flyby, June gets a freebie. And CDEC now have got to keep the pressure up. That's the most important thing again, just run at your enemies, don't stop ever. A static Storm being used for just one kill like that is, is perfectly worth it at this stage in the game. But that is one of their most valuable tools, locking down the Lina. So they do have to respect her until another Static Storm is up, or until the Earth is able to get that Blink Dagger. Not too far away from it. They do see Dark, but Dark is baiting for his allies. who are coming in hot. Roll in is once again going to be off point. Demon's going to put up a field that will catch the Legion Commander, prevent the duel for a couple more seconds, but now here comes the Monkeys with Flyby here as well. They will lose Demons, but it will be one for one trade so far. Puck has arrived. Coil onto two with the Haste Rune there. I don't think you can escape this. CM's going to try to buy some space for her friendly Lina. Will be successful in doing so. Giving up her own life so that Lina may live. Bible thump for the sisters. But this is not going to be the time and place for CDEC to stop with their aggression. Overwhelming odds will be launched. They have a lot of nukes just to randomly throw in. CDEC with no coil. 
Still no Static Storm. Should be backing off. If they had one, not the other, then I think they can keep going. Either and no Monkey King Ultimate is uh, a little bit too much. You gotta wait for a little bit. I mean, in that time, you're gonna be getting your Ursa his Blink Dagger. So, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good reason to wait. Blink Daggers and BKBs, the best reason to wait for items. And Puck is getting there as well. Puck doesn't have a bottle? Really, now. He was not taking that much damage from Alina. We don't really frequently see Alina not doing a lot of damage to her lane opponents, but she usually doesn't match up against the Puck. We see a lot of Puck offlane nowadays. So yeah, it will be a uh, bottle maybe for the Puck. Unless it got stolen or something like that I missed, which may be the case. Smoke up towards top. Ready the Abaddon. Kind of softened up. The roll will miss. There's a barrier still up here. Duel will be met with a borrowed time. Sep has a point of miscoil even because he's just that high a level. And he gained quite a bit of health from that borrowed time. Has another shield. In one second, Laguna Blade is going to be absorbed. Now the duel is there. And with this many heroes, Sep, as farmed as he may be, is not going to survive. 40 seconds down and oh, feels bad man, Hina Midas available. The value, the value. But they still have this Ursa with a blink. CDC still don't have a Naga Siren to worry about yet. Although it is starting to get there. Double blink daggers, a timing push with this Aegis. They really do need to win a convincing team fight because they don't have a Shadow Fiend hero to kill off structures. No Terror Blade either. Yeah, Ursa doesn't do it. So they will need to find success in some other way through overwhelming kill advantage. 8-8 eight, eight is not what I would call overwhelming kill advantage. Monkey King, a tree on a tree. They do know that there are targets in the area. I wonder if they're going to randomly... They have no idea, Eom. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyway, because there's something happening elsewhere. They caught the Legion Commander with a glimpse in the Static Storm and Flyby able to tear into her. And now he's going to tear into the Lina. You really want a Yule Scepter at that point. She's in a lot of trouble, but does have a lot of backup. Laguna Blade will get the kill onto Demons. Flyby, though, will still guarantee the kill with the team. The ultimate from the CM is going to be cancelled by a Boundless Strike. And now Flyby with the Monkey King ultimate is going to get yet another. Now looking at... The Naga Siren. There's no song here. She'll straight TP out. Not enough damage. Flyby was looking to the south end of that fight. The Disruptor. Able to set up quite a nice kill onto Dark. End up killing the Lina as well. And Shade surviving that. Getting his Blink Dagger. Same thing for the Ursa. Most likely not looking to use his Aegis anytime soon. But hey, it's a full restore. Not bad. Be bad in the meantime. Building towards his own Radiance. That mischance is actually going to be really, really good. Against the Naga Siren, against the uh, Legion Commander, and the Lina. All kind of right-click based. But I'm concerned for CDEC. Despite how great that fight was for them. It doesn't seem like they're getting uh, really quite enough ahead to be comfortable. They will have to still be fighting up against a, what seems like a pretty decently farmed Naga Siren. Starting to catch up pretty quickly to the uh, Abaddon and the Ursa of the other side. Still they have their blinks. They will be able to make quite a few plays as long as they see their targets. Which currently CDC don't really see. They see wrong. Got tagged by the orb. And that's about it. Double hand of Midas coming up on these supports. They can't really be building anything, you know, that much better than a Hand of Midas for the heroes themselves. Uh, you know, maybe Basher on the Monkey King would be better. But Hand of Midas, if it's coming out to him right now, and it is. I don't know why Couriers have backpacks. That just seems stupid to me. He'll have Midas. The smoke will miss. And Ehom. I mean, they will have the cleanest Naga Siren game in the world, but it looks like she will be able to get that Radiance up and... Start building up towards critical mass. Man, the Radiance is going to be matched by the Abaddon. So farmed. I mean, he's been getting, what, now like a minute, a minute and a half of 
safe lane free farm. It's going to be great to have a farm to batten like this, but... I'm not really sure if this is quite going to be enough to combat up against a Naga Siren with a similar item kit. Again, CDEC don't really have the best answers at dealing with Naga Siren illusions. I mean, they could kill him, for sure, but... Uh, Let's just say that there's no line on their side. They're going to jump in. Dark in for June. Immediately, there is a duel. Rip Monkey King. Another win for the Legion Commander. Should be 30. No, 44. Wow. On the Legion. That was a level 2 duel. She is pretty darn happy. Armlet first. It's not often that you get to walk into a Monkey King and duel him, but uh, that, uh, that TP attempt was ambitious. Tower now. Under some pressure, Demons does have a Static Storm available here. Backup is coming in the form of the Ursa. They put Dark into a cage, Static Storm him as well, but there are a couple of CC tools that they can use to get Dark some space. Heal up, he does have an armlet as well, and he's getting some lucky lifesteal procs on Demons, who is going to fall. Sep is going to arrive, but I don't think he has enough to really help out. No, he will with the Ursa, kill off the Legion, but get silenced for his troubles. He is still silenced, he does finally pop up the Borrowed Time, which is going to get a lot of health back. Thanks to the ultimate from the CM. Monkeys once again coming in as Sep is going to grab another kill for the team. Where is the backup? The backup's all dead, actually. Puck died to the north somehow. How did that happen? I don't know. But either way, it's Naga Siren and Lena, both of whom are very happy with the current standing of the game. Where the Naga Siren has the Radiance now completed and well, the Ursa and the Disruptor's attempts. Kind of running into a little bit of a wall here. CDC, if they want to take this game comfortably, had to have had a, uh, you know, 5-8 kill advantage by this point. It's perfectly even. Despite the farm that they have on the Abaddon, it's like, it's only an Abaddon at the end of the day. His farm, even with the Midas and a Radiance of his own, not going to be sustainable to keep him in the lead over the Naga Siren. By the way, uh, they, they killed off Disruptor again. He just doesn't do enough damage. He does quite a bit of damage, but over towards the bottom lane now. Coil onto two. Monkey King is already in. They do stun up the Earth Spirit. Nice roll, bro, but not enough damage. Now Laguna goes back towards the Puck with the Dragon Slave through. They'll get a quick two for... And the Earth Spirit will survive. My god, this is a Midas game. We have three on the way. Two here, three on the way. Uh, four, actually. Huck, Disruptor, Monkey King, Abaddon. Where's Ursa's Midas? That's what I want to know. I mean, Midas's are in this patch, I guess. But uh, you're not going to be able to keep up with the Naga Siren who has Radiance and soon to be Travels. Keeping up with her is. Well, Alchemist can do it. No one else really can. It requires you kill the Naga Siren, and so far that has not even been attempted by the CDEC side. They just haven't found her. Like, every single time they go for an aggressive move, they just run into someone who's not Naga Siren. Jump in, looking for a duel. Can't find on the puck. You coil the Legion Commander, and she's not going to snap, but she does get a clean duel win. LSA onto two Laguna Blade on Shade. Not quite enough to get the kill on either of those two heroes. They both slip out. And Sep, now on the Lina, is going to get the kill with the Blink in from the Puck. Looking for a little bit more. June's up top. Does still have the ultimate. With no Disruptor alive, continuing this fight is a tough sell. Especially since the kill on the Lina, well, it doesn't really do that much to impact the numbers. She's back up. Bloodstone, no uh, respawn time talent, but you know, still a lot of Bloodstone charges. Earth Spirit looking for top lane. If roll connects onto June, could be a pretty easy kill with the Lina in the area. He's going to jump into Alina. That's not what you want to see. does land a pretty big strike, but now he's lifted up into an LSA and a rock and a silence and the right clicks. That's just unfortunate, man. He, he planned that jump. He's like, all right, let's jump in. And uh, by the time he realizes he shouldn't, it was too late. What have we here? 
This game is going to be a struggle game for CDEC. You already see the Ursa starting to fall behind. Ursa just has a hero. Not really well matched up up against a uh, Naga Siren. And all the disables that he's running into. Plus the fact that the Naga Siren... I mean, I, I keep on like mentioning the Naga Siren because that's like the incoming threat. The threat for right now is this Lina. Still at 12 Bloodstone charges even after dying. The Legion Commander with 72 damage, 23 minutes in, which is an absolute ridiculous amount, is going to be going for a uh, pretty sweet item here. Apparently I can't click on these and bring it up. Let's just, uh, let's just bring it up right now. That is not how you spell. Heaven's Halberd is like the sickest item, except for the fact that uh, BKB is good. But disarming, if that disarm can stick, a really big deal. I've seen a couple of Legion Commanders almost get it, but usually they decide to switch things up at the last second. Static Storm to the CM, not quite enough to get the kill. Boundless Strike will swat her down, off in the backside. Oh, it's a quick duel for Dark. He does to worry about an Ursa right now. Backup is coming in with the coil, and the Ursa with the BKB is just going ham. They'll kill off the Lina, that's her double life. And now the monkeys, they'll come out. And Lena's going to respond into an unhappy situation. She may respond quickly, but she will go down. Denies! No! Should have been fine with the song. Miscommunication there from Ehome, giving away some free Bloodstone charges. Naga Siren also wastes the song. It is level 2, so it's not really a terribly huge deal, but it's still offline. And CDEC get the victory that they really need. It is going to cost them another dual win on the Legion Commander. Now 86 total. But able to avoid the uh, duel on the puck is essential. Getting the Ursa in there with that fresh 10 second BKB charge, just letting him go off. It was Ehome in a very clustered position without their Naga Siren song, which, if she was there earlier, would have put a hard wall in front of CDEC. It was a great fight for CDEC, to be sure. But the overall impact on how this game is going to go for the next couple minutes, I'm not sure if that's really going to impact it. We'll bring it back down to a 4k lead, the lead that they had, but again, this Naga Siren is very quickly reaching critical mass. This Legion is still wandering around without much threat, and soon we'll have evasion. Like, the disarm is great and everything, but you got to remember that versus physical right-clickers, the Heaven's Halberd is just a great item to just have in your inventory. A lot of health from the uh, from the strength component, and of course from that invasion. Ursa is going to prep to deal with that. Uh, is mostly preparing for Radiance mischance with this MKB, but you know maybe he will get extra value. Dark still camping around. Sees a kill that he can never really get. But, man, this Legion is just so confident, wandering wherever he wants and just hunting random heroes. Speaking of hunting heroes, or Disruptor, hit with the Magnetize and dead in an instant. Jeez. That was a lot of damage. It was only level 1 Nova. It seems like it was a lot more than that. Sep, gonna be jumped in this time. Duel is there, and Nabaddon's gonna get juiced up by Laguna Blade. It is, in theory, possible to kill off an Abaddon before he reaches the threshold where he's uh, auto Gonna, uh, gonna automatically use the borrow time if you burst him down. I've done it once, but uh, it's really hard to do. <laughs> is that even possible? Health threshold 400? It is actually possible. Actually, with the hood, it may not be possible. I'm not gonna do the math. I'm not gonna try. Don't ask me to do the math. It's really close, though. It's easier to do with like a lion. Just finger of death and a bad end. We'll go from 401 HP to zero. No time for borrowed time to activate. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a possibility again. Run to the bad one more time. Frosted up, duel again. This time with a lot of heroes, so the duel probably won't get the kill. But it's actually going to set up for a lot of extra heroes to come in. Flyby comes in huge. Claws down the CM and then the Naga Siren, who they finally caught up to. Dark is pretty much alone, and he is pretty screwed. And CDEC, they're abaddoned. 
<laughs> really tanky hero. Ehome know that they can't kill him in the duration of the duel. Still decide to go for it. And sufficiently punished. As CDEC had all the time in the world to mobilize. Oh, June. Okay, well. Got the Monkey King. My bad. Man, this is a bad in. A lot of armor now with this Lotus. Evasion has, uh, I mean, if you get dueled, you're going to have this medallion armor as well. And extra magic resistance. He's level 23. And he'll have the fat shields, I assume, soon enough. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get the strength talent. And still, this game is not comfortable for CDEC, but they are striking back on pretty much on an even keel. Legion and Lena. There is a lot of. There's a lot of dual damage coming up in the Legion. As far as keeping up farm, that's not really what Legion does. Usually you tend to fall behind in the gold department as Legion, unless you're just, you know, always getting kills. That. That's the that's the party guy. What the hell? Okay guys, hold on. Well, people are dying, but I have really I didn't realize that was playing noise. I have never experienced that before. I will Jesus Christ, that is so freaking annoying. I have to fix it right now and keep an eye on demons. Who's teleporting out? Should maybe be fine. No, the kick lands just in time. I thought I was hearing music. I'm not crazy. Demons down. I'm going to very quickly pull up a uh, pull up a wait screen, guys. That's not the right one. Let's pull up this one. And I will see if I can solve this issue. Get me out of here. Leave. You're playing radio in my freaking game. I can't take that right now. Here we go. We're back. I thought I was hearing music. I thought I was crazy, but no, Dark's gonna get jumped now. Disarmed by the Legion Commander's Heaven Halberd. I mean, it was pretty much too late because she was already kind of messed up, but uh, hey, disarm into duel? Something like that? You never know. And Ursa is pretty dangerous right now, but so is the Naga Siren. Does have the Mantis style illusions. Will be everywhere. And uh, one more item before I would consider her full cancer mode, Naga Siren. And that Octarine. Should be picked up pretty quickly. And of course, she's uh, going to have level 3 song soon as well. Ursa can still get some kills with his BKB through the song. It just gets a lot more difficult. And wow, wow, we have an Ags on the Earth Spirit. This is uh, an Ags thanks to the Hand of Midas. Pretty much solely thanks to that. I mean, Earth Spirit's been doing a pretty good job. Not going to discount his play. But uh, being able to just yank someone out from Ursa Focus or from, uh, from a bad situation, from, like a Silence, from a Disruptor or a Puck. That is... Uh, some really big game as long as the Earth Spirit himself isn't caught by a silence. Enchant Remnant, in case you guys are curious. It actually does damage, although that is like the least relevant part of that. It's just a get out of jail free card for an ally. Non negotiable point click save. Feels good, man. And I guess it just gives them some pretty good stats as well. I mean, he's level 18. For an Earth Spirit, that is pretty, pretty high for 32 minutes. Dark and wrong. And look for Sep. Well, we know this isn't going to work unless the Laguna Blade works this time. Freezing Field is there, and it won't quite work. He gets the borrowed time off. And now it's going to be Lena punished to death. Glimpse back onto the Earth Spirit. He's dead as well. They have a Boundless Strike, maybe? No, they already used it, but they're going to jump in looking for a CM. Monkey King on your ass. I don't like your odds here, CM. Coil. Just to make sure she doesn't waste any of their time. No deny to the ogres either. Over in mid in the meantime. Sep with his right clicks and the curse. Just gonna go to town on the tower? No, there's no creep wave. Cause Naga Siren. Haha. <laughs> Can't deal with her and you don't find her. 
No creep wave, no Roche. That is such a huge bummer from CDEC. It's like you get that many kills, waste a duel on the Legion Commander, and you can't get any objectives off of it. I mean, they're not good at taking objectives. They're not good at, like, you know, 5v5ing into towers. They need numbers if they're going to take it, and it's just not possible. Dark. I wonder if he can go for flyby. Well, he's going to overshoot demons. That's a little unfortunate. A mischance? Disarm? There's a BKB up on flyby, so not really sure if I like your odds here, Legion. Now looking for a little bit more. Onto the Lena. Glimpse back. Where are you going, lady? You're coming right back to the bear. Yule Scepter is there, but the field goes up. She has nowhere to run. She will kill herself. Another two kills for CDEC. This Naga Siren is keeping CDEC off their objectives, though, and that's really all you need. You can afford to lose, I mean, you know, to some extent. You can afford to lose a couple of heroes, as long as you're not losing objectives to the CDEC side. As long as the Naga Siren is still farming, and she is. She's keeping her objectives safe, she's keeping the CDEC objectives pressured. Can't ask for anything more from Naga Siren. So yeah, it's like these kills are going to get CDEC ahead, but into a winning position, mm, I mean, being ahead helps you get into a winning position, but one does not necessarily mean you're going to go towards the other. Man, this puck. Uh, this is an Octarine from Hand of Midas. Who else has a Midas? Okay, Ags build up on Disruptor, that's huge game. We're going to go towards Roche. Third Roche of the game, and well, they have Ursa, so should be pretty fast. Although E Home are coming in pretty quickly. And Naga Siren's right around the corner. Not quite in time, though. She'll take down a tier 2 in the meantime towards top lane. That's not bad. Flyby is pissed and ready to go. He has a double damage rune. They're gonna smoke just to try to escape faster, prevent any glimpse shenanigans. Smart move. Very rarely see the escape smoke, but up against Disruptor, it is really powerful. Oh, wow, Shadow Blade and Disruptor didn't actually see that. Saw, saw the amulet. Got a blade delivered to him. That's full. Hand of Midas value right there. He battened. <laughs> Building up some uh, serious, serious bulk now with an Octarine. He's going to be doing his best Naga Siren impression. He's got the fat shields. He has a lot of tankiness. This is actually kind of, uh, kind of Alchemist-esque. Like, he has that staying power, he has that uh, that AoE damage. Perhaps he, he has actually kind of similar damage output as long as he's uh, able to stay on his targets. Yeah, it is kind of like a, a poor man's alchemist. I say that, he's only 1k behind the enemy legion commander, who by the way is going to randomly find demons and decide to blink out, but she's going to be chased down, flyby, caught two with the field and the static storm, where are you guys going? Into the grave, Flyby grabs a double as the E-Home team stumble into one too many C-Deck heroes. That's MKB on the Ursa, still has a double life. Now since this MKB is up, Flyby is actually much better now at taking structures. Just has an item that gives him plus damage. Usually we don't see uh, those type of items, not in bulk at least, uh, picked up by Ursas. Yeah. Kill the tower. Where's the creeps? There are actually creep waves here. Naga Siren is focusing her attention over in mid and in bottom. Keeping those lanes pushed out, but it's going to cost her top. And with no buyback for another 20, dare say CDC would probably behoove them to uh, test the high ground. See what they can do. I'm not really sure if they're going to find many similar openings like this. Sep is going to go for it. His allies seem to have different plans, though. It's going to take a lot of right clicks, but here comes the Ursa. Immediately netted down, though. Will enrage it off. Lift up onto the Abaddon. He'll get stunned up. Borrowed time still active. He'll Lotus himself. He'll return to Laguna Blade, I think. Able to get a little bit of extra space here. 
Chase is on. June's gonna bounce into the trees. He should be okay. Off in the back, though, Earth Spirit by himself is gonna solidify the Ursa. To let the team get into position. Duel onto the Abaddon. The duel should be won. I think it's gonna be close. Yes. But the Ursa still running wild. He's gonna lose his first life. I don't know how they deal with him another time. June's still alive. Wrong's still in the trees. He's gonna force Staff up the cliff, bounce back down, and get killed off by Flyby. The Naga Siren has lost control of bottom and mid. Those are pushing back towards the Radiant. And with CDEC down in Abaddon, but still with Ursa, they can keep on rolling. They have a double health bar now on the Ursa after having used that Aegis. And it's only Legion and Naga with potentially a CM. Song just to stall. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's not really a high cooldown. But this might cost them Raxes. On top, the illusions are once again gonna come on in, but very quickly will be dealt with. A couple more Manta style illusions, Flyby, Shade, and June all have their eyes on the prize. And they'll take it down. Demons with Shadow Blade just scouting ahead. 15 seconds of leeway, and they will back off. Should be a clean retreat, and it will be. Everyone from CDEC barred the Abaddon. Gonna make it out alive. A fantastic fight overall for CDEC. Like, managing their retreats very well. And this Naga Siren not able to actually get in there to do a lot of damage. For the most part, CDEC just uh, getting in there really quick, getting out even quicker. Soon we're gonna have Ursa with a lot of extra bulk. I mean, just a Reaver coming up, but uh, yeah, once you get that extra lifesteal, you're going to be very difficult to kill off. And all the focus went to the Abaddon. And even though, yes, he is a threat, it's like, do you really want to be focusing a 2,000 HP hero with a million armor, magic resistance, shields, and borrowed time, and evasion? Or, I guess, pseudo-evasion. It is kind of uh, something that Ehome are forced to do, but they really don't want to be doing it. They will smoke up. See a Puck over in mid, but this is a Puck we're talking about here. Not an easy kill. Puck, by the way, gone for the uh, 25 gold talent. He's already filthy rich. <laughs> Dagon level 5, and then I don't really know what to do with this inventory as Puck. I mean, you replace the Midas, obviously, with something bigger. Sheep stick, a Shiva's, something along those lines. But Puck is actually almost topped out. We very frequently see this actually. Puck's like get the gold talent, but don't have anything to spend it on. Moon shards, I guess. The Naga Siren is pushing, cutting bottom, pushing top. And C deck now have to play a pretty mean game of whack a mole with this Naga. Killed her off only once total this game. The smoke on a Naga. Can't open the doors, but Naga should, unless she really makes a big mistake, have always buyback available. And one lane of super melee creeps is going to do pretty much nothing up against this E home draft. E -home def uh, CDC definitely do have to work harder to uh, take a little bit more. I mean, even Negas not going to be the biggest thing in the world. Oh, Boundless Strike, going to catch the CM, jump up, and Coil. Wrong is dead. Monkey King, Balanced Hero. It's only a CM kill at the end of the day. They have to also keep this Creep Wave alive if they're going to make a play off of this. I don't really think they can. The lanes are just not working out well for CDEC. And it's only a CM. Like, it's not really something you're excited to make a playoff of. Satanic on Ursa. This Diffusal Blade on Naga is going to be a pain in the ass. Baden has a pretty deep mana pool. I've been gone for that Octarine. He's definitely a hero that uh, can very quickly be depleted. Fly by as well. You don't really need a lot of mana on Ursa. But you need some. You need to be able to get those Fury Swipes out with the overpower. Uh, using Earthshock is whatever, you don't really need it. They will go down towards the bottom lane though, Abaddon. Already popped his borrowed time and now Naga Siren gonna put everyone to sleep. And I don't really think there's any chase here, though they, 
Definitely do look like they want to chase. They do see a target in the Earth Spear, but he's going to roll right over the cliffside. See the ward on his way out. And be on his merry way. He'll take down a shrine. It's a little bit more gold, but uh, it's... Seems like drops in the bucket at this point. Let's see what these... Uh, check in with these Hand of Midas's again. Hands of... Hands of Midas? Hand of Midas's? I don't know. Yule Scepter picked up on the Disruptor. Abaddon is going to ship his out. I mean, he's pretty much done here. He has a couple more bigger items to get. Like, you can upgrade the hood, obviously. Get uh, Moon Shards for a little bit more DPS. Monkey King. BKB after Shadow Blade Basher. Looking for that Silver Edge upgrade. Just a little bit of extra damage coming out from him. Earth Spirit, Yule Scepter on this guy. Really, really great item to have up against Static Storm uh, until that's agged. Great item to have versus Ursa as well. BKB charge should be at minimum. If it's not at minimum, yeah, it is. And I think that's actually everyone with the Midas. Uh, except for Puck, but he has the uh, gold talent. He's going to be overflowing with gold. He's going to go for a shotgun. This is an Ethereal Blade Dagon Puck. Not Tinker, Puck. It's going to actually be pretty heavy. Like, this CM, this Earth Spirit, they're going to be in for some tough times. Even this Lena. I mean, she's not been able to really keep up in a substantial way. She's pretty bulky. I mean, the Ags, the Bloodstone, it's pretty good, but... Puck is going to start blasting fools. Straight push down mid. Just one creep wave to work with, though. It's going to get them a Tier 2 for the future, but for right now, that gold is... Again... Not really going to be hugely swinging things. Man, look at this net worth chart. Absolutely insane for 45 minutes in. The Puck is overtaking the Naga Siren because of the gold talent, because of the Midas. Again, like, Alchemists can do this. You don't expect this from a Puck, but level 25 talent is uh, apparently pretty nice. But, you know, at a certain point, this gold is just not doing a lot for you. Got buyback, get moon shards. Upgrade your travels. Dagon is on a 10 second cooldown, but gets jumped in by the stun. Duels here as well. TPs are coming in, but it's gonna be too late. Puck is down. TPs are coming in also to the shrine. Those are also too late. June pops a BKB just to run. Ursa does blink away. There is the chase. Roll in. Another kick. Slows down the bear. As a satanic. There's no duel they can use to lock him down. Gets shielded. Now he's going to think about turning around. Static Storm drops only on the Lina, though. Net is going to be deployed onto the Ursa. Gets reflected by the Lotus Orb onto the Naga Siren. Thinking about singing just to stop this fight, and will do so. Glimpse not available. I don't think there will be a chance for it. Although, you cancel the TP on the Naga. Why? Did he misclick? He must have missed Micro with his illusions. And now he's on the run. He can do a lot of damage here. <laughs> Kill off demons in the back. But is still... Dead where he really shouldn't be. Can be enchanted? No. The Earth Spirit arrives a little bit too late. And is going to try to roll out himself. It's only a slow roll, though. Jumping from the Ursa. Sep going to give chase as well. With his from the Ursa, he, uh, from the Earth Spirit. Will be fine, but wrong. Is not looking that hot. Radiance Burn will kill him. A simple misclick, I think. Naga Siren moved her illusions off to this direction. And then I think her hero might have also been selected in that box. So ended up canceling a TP out. Shit happens, I guess. You know, fat fingers, whatever. But that... Making that mistake on a Naga Siren is extremely costly. Luckily for her, she's not going to have to buy out. But still can't keep that for the future. And also, luckily for the team, they're going to have a chance to go for Roche. CDC, though, with an Ursa draft, will always be checking that Roche because they, they're they counting on it. It is kind of their territory. And a glimpse back. He's going to see the Lina. Here comes the monkey. Strike. He's going to land again. Field goes up, but the Lina is going to get pulled out by the Earth Spirit. Ursa, in the meantime, should be clean out Roche. No, he's actually halfway thinking about chasing. This Roche is going to die mighty quick. The home, they should have the vast majority of their buybacks up. In fact, yeah, they, they pretty much all do. And the Puck is a viable kill for sure. He's going to get out of there with the orb. 
The double life for June. Cheese picked up by Flyby. Just in case. The Naga Siren is in full swing right now. But CDEC, with the amount of farm they have, holding pretty well against any sort of slow and steady split push from the Illusions. I mean, it's, it's an inconvenience that they really will never be able to completely counter. But this Puck, like, every single time he sees an Illusion, blam, just dead to the Dagon. Uh, multiple Illusions, a little bit different, but the Naga Siren is really only able to lock down one lane at a time. Has to get some Illusions to, like, go through bot and cut in mid like that. That'll stop this push, but they'll just deploy the monkeys right away just to make this push safe. That is a very defensive use of this ultimate. They just want this tower. And a glimpse back onto Wrong. Only a CM, not a big deal. They will coil up onto the Earth Spirit. He's in quite a bit of trouble. Flyby hops BKB. He's going to start to go to work on the Legion Command who duels up the Baden again. Why? Why do you keep doing that? Double buyback is there from Ehome. And they're going to get a really nice kick, but the Static Storm lands onto two heroes, including the Naga Siren. Where's the Ursa? Can't really get in just yet. Monkey King is the only one still in this fight. As well as the Puck will throw out Ethereal Blade. We'll get a kill with it. But it's going to be June to fall next. Does have that Aegis. Not a big deal. Enchant Remnant reflected. I've never seen that before. By that Lotus Orb. Doing some serious work for September. Now Flyby is going to jump in. Gets a first hit bash on the Legion Commander. Claws her to death. Earth Spirit as well. Zapped by the Puck. The Lina has returned to this fight. With the buyback, but already two bought back heroes are, are going to be dropped twice. And the Lina afterwards. That's three heroes with no more buyback. It's only the Naga. CM. She's going to die afterwards. Top lane is in full breach. And mid lane is not looking that much better. It looks like C-Deck have done it. A late game Naga Siren is no big deal. When you have this much farm on this many heroes. Which we, again, we very rarely see. But uh, OS Frog decides Hand of Midas should be viable on everyone. And so it shall be mid lane, top lane, and now the Ancient. I did not expect this result. I honestly did not. But man, they blast down the Naga Siren again. They kill off the CM. And that is going to be it. CDEC win a late game match versus Naga Siren without even killing her. They just walk right in. Monkey King was extremely stacked in that uh, late game phase. With nice static storms, a pattern obviously. Uh, a really tanky hero, and, uh, you know, duel's pretty good. You'd think after, like, the fourth or fifth time, Dark would stop dueling the Abaddon. Like, why? <laughs> why are you doing that? Just trying to cheese out a kill with the Laguna Blade? Kind of hard. Guys, oh, this is actually good. Look at this! <laughs> I didn't even realize. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not right, man. Abaddon's not supposed to have dual damage. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, no one's supposed to have dual damage except for Legion Commander, but a bad end of all heroes is definitely not supposed to have dual damage. This is game one in the best of three. CDEC up one game. We'll see if Ehome Keen turned it around. I'm Mike Loris, and I'll be back in just a little bit.